too. Bun B said something recently. You saw what Bun B said? Mm-hmm. Uh, he said that Houston, um, I'm paraphrasing it here. Houston looks after their older rappers more than New York and L.A. does. Now, the New York one didn't uh, surprise me, but well, that's L.A. True. surprised Well, that's true. The New York thing is like true. Because I feel like L.A. holds down their OGs more than anybody. That's what I thought. Am I wrong? You spent time in Cali. It's definitely a Cali-Houston conversation when I thought about it. But, see, here's the thing, and I think here's what Bun is speaking to. And he said L.A. He didn't say Cali. Let me not say Cali. Oh, he's talking LA. about L.A.? He said L.A. Ooh, okay, so. Because the Bay's different. Okay, so here's the thing. Just quick story right quick. So one of the guys that I just started working with recently, he's from the east side of Long Beach. Mm -hmm. And we're about the same age. He's only like two or three years younger than me. So it's like I bought up you know, a local artist named Punch. He was big around the time game was big. He was just local guy. Right. But for anybody that knew in the city, Punch could spit, you know what I'm saying, and was on par with game. And Punch was from Compton. But I would see Punch in Orange County. I would see him in Riverside. I would see him in Long Beach. And he got a lot of love in those places. That's not L.A. You gotcha. feel me? So it's like when Bun is saying L.A., it's like, uh, possibly, but just Cali as a whole, at least SoCal, the way that I've seen it work, it's like, no, nah, I can't say that because I've seen, with my own two eyes, local artists who literally are never going to make it past, like, maybe Arizona, New Mexico, be big and have money and, like, survive and thrive and be fine just sitting in a pocket of California. I remember maybe what, not just LA, right? But no, like all all the parts in between and Costa Mesa and for, yeah. I was in LA, uh, man, that's nearly ten years ago now. But out in uh, I think it was like 2014 or whatever, and I was just surprised how LA radio was just playing like you know next episode. They was playing like all the old stuff, and this wasn't no old school hip hop station either. Now. So that doesn't happen here. And I will call out Atlanta for that. We don't really take care of our veterans like that when it comes to radio play. No, we no. Still, we whack. I would have been okay if Bun B would have called us out. But we're, LA, I didn't get that vibe. We're, we're not as bad as New York, but we're pretty bad. Yeah, we are. Yeah. No, no, no. We're pretty I think, bad. I think the we're like the runner up. I think we are. But see, hip, how do I say this? Atlanta is rap scene. I guess it's kind of like a microcosm of what hip hop and black culture is anyway. I think we are so focused on the next thing that we don't cherish the past. That doesn't excuse we it. We go on to the next thing so quickly. And it really sucks when Big Boy and Sleepy Brown are dropping an album and the city doesn't make a deal about it. It and doesn't I, excuse the behavior, though. It, it's bad. You know, especially when, when our radio stations now, don't don't um, reciprocate that because Outkast and Organized Noise, they made this scene. There would be no hip hop stations in Atlanta like that for real without those guys and the impact that they put in. Yeah, they whack. Um, what I will say to Bun's point, and I think this is where Bun is probably making the strongest point, is that I think he's talking about, and, and this is what I can't speak to about the Cali thing because I obviously haven't lived there in quite some time. Yeah. The way they support that independent local artist yeah. that literally stayed local the entirety of the time. Like, he's not, he's not talking about him. He's not talking about uh, Face. He's not even talking about Sauce. You know what I'm saying? He's talking about the guys that literally have been local the last 10, 15 years. The Zeros and guys like that. That, like, literally the town yeah. keeps them alive and financially stable and solvent and, and keep them in the lifestyle that they have. And there might be something to that. And But that's one of those things too, man. It's like you'd have to like be around and still down enough to like know that. But there, but there is some to it. But the L.A. thing, it's like I don't know about that. Well, I, I would say this in New York's defense too. I remember my first couple trips to New York and even years and years after that, I would hear Biggie on the radio, but I guess Biggie's different. I don't know. New York, but New York not supporting. Don't count Biggie. Yeah, New York not supporting KD3 is a problem. And get light, not getting any radio play in New York. I even hollered at Ebro about that. Like, My, tell me why this record's not getting any play. They didn't, they didn't play Wu-Tang Clan when Wu-Tang Clan was in their prime. Mm. It's an old problem, not a new problem. 
Jay Short with the Super Chat says, unfortunately, I think there are too many uh, politics in Cali to make that happen. Dude be, dudes be too emotional and petty out here sometimes. So I guess Jay Short's not denying that. that right. That's, that's going what, on in Cali. See, that's what I mean. Is like you can get California love. It's just like, you know, L.A.'s real, you know, clicky. Mm -hmm. So it's like I don't know how that California love like works in relationship to L.A., all the subsidiary parts coming together as a whole, it's like, yeah, I can see that. But I think Bun just talking about Houston. And so if he just talking about like one city, he he might have something to it because it's like, no, I do feel like those LA artists need that, need the people from uh, Pasadena and need the people from Long Beach and need the people from Inglewood and need the people from Watts and need the people from uh from Pomona and the people from West Coast. Like, yeah, I do think San Diego, I do think that's part of it. I think there's a, a notion out here for the people outside of, LA or outside of the West Coast, I would say that if Dre ain't involved, then the city is silent. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, also too, see, Cali, Cali and LA also has the the fortune. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And here's the flip side to it: well, a lot of their local guys go blow up and become big guys, Mike, more so than in Houston. No, you really. know what I'm saying? It's like, no, 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 Schoolboy Q ain't staying local forever. Kendrick ain't staying local forever. Yeah. Nipsey not staying local forever. Game not staying local forever. You feel what I'm saying? They yeah. have a long lineage of their local guy making it big, big. So big. there might not be as many, many local guys running around because most of the local guys that was running around crews that made it big, Mike, you know what Speaking I'm saying? Speaking of the game. Did you hear what Warren G said? I did. I was wondering if you ah. heard what Warren G said, Mike. <laughs> wait I was minute, wondering wait if you heard what me, Warren G said. Let me read Jay Short. Things just uh, ain't the same for gangsters. Listen, I've given the man props, but let, let me uh, let me read Jay Short. Tried to tell you about the Watcher, Mike. It ain't like that. All right, it Jay is Short, like that. I Jay tried Short to tell with, you it's Jay like Short, that. That's Warren no, G on. talking. Jay Short with the super chat says, Bun B doesn't take into account gentrification. The demographics of L.A. has changed in the last two decades. I think that's a very poignant point, and I think that's very accurate. This is what, um, let me let people know what Warren G said. Warren G got on Drink Champs, and they asked him, the game or Eminem? When clearly the answer is the game, right? But he, he was like, you know, no question, Eminem. And he brought up the fact that Eminem wrote The Watcher, and he sit here, he sat there and act like, the Watcher was just this magnum opus of lyricism where he was like, man, Eminem got in the Dre's head and yada, yada. Like, listen, man, we never talked about The Watcher like that. Cool. And, I, and I've been on this show and I've said, I like The Watcher. I've quoted The Watcher and I gave Eminem credit for his writing on The Watcher. But what we're not going to do is sit here and act like in 1999 when 2001 dropped, everybody was talking about the bar work on The Watcher. That wasn't the case. It wasn't. Let's not sit here and sit in here act like the Watcher was some magnum opus of lyricism. That's revisionist history. I told you it's one of Dr. Dre's best songs. I, it's not. You said that it's not. It is. Because what you said, no, this is what you said. It's one of Dr. Dre's best solo performances on a song. And I'm like, well, that's a padded stat. How many solo songs does he really have? <laughs> like... <laughs> Facts are facts. <laughs> See, you're discounting G thing. You're discounting next episode. Where does let's do it like this? Where does the Watcher rank on 2001? I think it could be a top five song. We about to go through this album. Um, you were gonna say that? <laughs> Kasi with the super chat says Illmatic number one. It was written number two. KD three number three. I'm liking the way y'all thinking. Lost tapes number four. Mm. Magic number five. Stillmatic number six. KD2, number seven, Godson, number eight, uh, Magic 2, number nine, number 10, Life is Good, Nas has 10 classics. Now, I don't completely agree with the order, but that's not a bad order. It's not a bad list. It's not a bad order at all. I mean, like, I don't completely agree. KD3 is too high. When you see Stillmatic at six, you're like, damn, but, I mean, he has Magic, Lost Tapes, and KD3 over it. I mean, that's not too bad. No. Uh, Mitch with the Super Chat still says, Matic is The Watcher 2 is three. way better than the first one. Hmm. Still, still Matic is probably still number three or four. Okay, let's, let's pull up 2001. I know this album by heart because I love this album. It's actually one of my favorite hip-hop albums of its time period. The Watcher is obviously the first song. You think The Watcher is better than Fuck You with Devin, Dude, and Snoop. 
I do. I ain't mad at that. It's not better than still DRE. It's the next. <laughs> it's not better than explosive. It's not better than what's the difference. I like it more than what's the difference. Um, I don't, but okay. I could see where you're coming That's from. That's fine. Nah, is it better than Forgot About Dre? I think so. I think so. Nowadays, everybody want to talk like they got something to say. Don't. don't, don't, um, don't you don't have to mock them, man. Like, I'm not mocking them. That's how you're rapping. He was rapping. Yeah. So Nowadays, bad. everybody want to talk like they got something to say. You want me to deepen the voice or something? <laughs> like, that's how the nigga was rapping. Petty level high. <laughs> the next episode. No, it's not better it's than that. It's not better than that. All right. So we got three songs better. Um, Let's see. Uh, We got L.A. Niggas. No. Yeah, I think it's better than the rest of those records. I think the only one that might be close is... So it's fourth. Uh, I forgot about Dre. I think What's the Difference is better. Okay, but that would still put it in the top five. Even if you said What's the Difference is better, it would still be in the top five. It's a top five record on 2001. All right, now let's pull up the chronic. Stop that. I'm just saying, like... <laughs> Stop that. So it's not as high as we're sitting here making it. I mean, it's a Hold dope on. record. It's a dope record. <sighs> And Remember I think he did a great chron- job. I mean, The Chronic has a lot, a lot of great, great songs. Hold on, let me see. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't want to do that. Never mind, scratch that. Yeah, yeah, man. I mean, you want to put that over G thing? Or is no, it even on that level? No, it's not on the level of like the first half of The Chronic. I'm sorry, I have to let people know I'm doing a show, man. People yeah, blowing ditto. me up and whatnot. The record, yeah, all the records from like record one to like from Dre Day to Lil Ghetto Boy are all better than The Watcher on The Chronic. And they said Mike is actually a Eminem stand. You guys caught me. You do know more you of his verses me. than I do offhand. I mean, I'm just educated on stuff that I criticize. Uh, <laughs> is that the reason? <laughs> What's the next topic? <laughs> Nowadays, everybody wants to talk. Um, you want to talk about Russ and his discrepancies or this trap Mount Rushmore? Or late registration. 